home. Praise God, I'm working Sister May on to make heaven my home. Hallelujah, praise God. And our labors are not in vain in the Lord, are they? Praise God. That uh, if, if I can't relax a whole lot down here and, and uh, everything go good, uh, why well, let me suffer down here. Praise God. Uh, and uh, I thought of the youth service we had maybe last Sunday night, and uh, Brother Kyle and Sister Abigail sang that song, uh, uh, My Goal, My Goal in Life. Some way, how is it in when? That's, that's my goal. I have but just one goal to make heaven my home. Praise God. That's my goal tonight. To make heaven my home. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I thought, uh, I thought uh, uh, that would be a good song for them to sing at my funeral. Praise God. If I go before they do, I have but one goal. To make heaven my home. Praise God. Just good to be in church. It's good to see everybody. Uh, we'll get uh, started. We may have a, a couple of songs. Do we have a, a volunteer song later? Praise the Lord. If uh, if I don't have a volunteer song later, why, Brother Austin may he may lead lead us in a song. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, Sister Kim, are you a, a song leader? Praise God. Uh, Sister Sherlyn can, but uh, but she's not volunteered. So we'll, we'll uh, Brother Austin's listening at the book. But you feel like it, stand and let's sing. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Praise God. What page you got, Brother? One thirty in the old songbook. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Long years ago, when I in sin, I had no hope, no peace within. Down on my knees in agony, I prayed to Jesus and He gladly set me free. I never shall forget the day when all the burdens of my soul rolled away. It makes me happy, glad and free. I'll sing it shout before He. To me, I never shall forget the day when all the burdens of my soul rolled away. It makes me happy, glad and free. I'll sing and shout it for He's everything to me. Now I can feel Him by my side. Shout it. 
Jesus said he gladly set me free. For I never shall forget the day. God, I never shall forget that night as long as I keep my right mind, praise God, on the Thursday night, November the 8th, 1984, praise God, at Hope County Church of God, hallelujah, praise God, the Lord wonderfully saved me, praise God, and brought me up out of sin, praise God, hallelujah, that, uh, 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 that very night, uh, uh, I took something off I had on. I started laying down things, praise God. Uh, raised in holiness, I knew some things. Uh, uh, Sister Janice, that, uh, that I just, I knew Christians didn't have or, or do. And, and the Lord helped me, and I just, uh, I just laid down things uh, uh, all along, off and on for a few years maybe, praise God. The Lord are uh, working on me. Praise God. At this time, we'll get ready to go down to prayer. Uh, Brother, Brother Frankie, will you come and take prayer requests? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Turn it on. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Turn on and on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Good to know Jesus, ain't it? Traveling through this world's sorrow.
His soul ascended. I'm coming back, the Lord is saying. The Lord is from much to the city. Oh, winds of love, you call away. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know. God, if if, uh, if the Lord takes Brother Ray before the rapture, we're going to miss him at Mount Zion, aren't we? Praise God, but he's a he's a he's a he's a work for the Lord many years. Him and Sister Allen and others. Praise God. Anyone else have a song on your on your heart? You feel like singing? Okay, come on, sister. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'll be perfect in tune. You'll be in tune. Yes, you will. Not one soul will miss a note. Everybody will be happy. Everybody will be singing. If we ain't singing, we may be shouting. But I'll tell you one thing, you're not going to find no dull place in heaven. Amen. You're not going to find no quiet place in heaven. No, it's not going to be quiet over there. This is the quietest world you'll ever stay. If you go to hell, it's going to be hollering, going on. Yeah. But just think about it. Claudia, if we get to heaven, my Lord and my God, what a time. 
And I can see my Jesus. That's the main one. The walls of Jasper's fine. The streets, Harry Gold was fine. That's good. But what matters, Brother Frankie, is Jesus. He's the reason why we're happy. If I make it to heaven, it's not going to be because of Alice's goodness. But it's going to be because of Jesus' precious blood. If you get to heaven, it's not going to be on your works. It's not going to be on your goods. But it's going to be on the blood of Jesus. We sit mighty quiet, but we can just think about it. Because I'm saved, it's because of his blood. Precious blood. Didn't have it to do. But if you're there, the heart of what? Love. You know what's so good about it? He didn't leave one soul out. When he died, he died for the whole world. Heaven was built for the whole world. If you want to go, you can go. But if you have a choice, if you don't want to go, you don't have to go. But I tell you all this much. The beauty of this world don't entice me. Oh, no. But where I'm going, I'm beholding. I'm going to have some new eyes. These natural eyes can't look what's over there in heaven. But I'm going to have some brand new eyes. I'm a view of the most beautiful place that's ever been created. And you know who did it? God did it. He did it for every one of us tonight, church. We want to praise him more than I, I want to praise him more than I do. I'm so behind on my praises. I thought about these are uh, going on three years. I've had three operations, been in the hospital three times. But you know what? I got discouraged the first time. I haven't got discouraged all night. Because you know why? Even in the hospital, he was there. My comfort didn't leave me. The patients in there, the nurse, she said, John, you don't look like no patient. I reckon they looked like me and said, you need to be home. And you know who that was? God. When I took my operation for my go they said it was dead. I could have come right home. Wasn't hurting. You know who it was? It was God. Did I deserve it? No. But you know, that's just like him. That's just like him. He loves us so much. He'll show us that love. He's been my company. He's been my guide these years. So why should I not praise him? Not Alice. No, not Alice. I don't praise me because I'm not worthy. But the king of Cain is worthy to be praised. Sometimes when I start bragging on the Lord, I don't know hardly when to. I know when to start, but it's like I don't know hardly when to stop. I'm not for a show. I mean what I say. I enjoy my salvation. I got something that don't make me miserable. It makes me feel good. I tell you, when you was out there in sin, you, you tried sin. It had a little pleasure in it. But this is make you feel good all the time. Even though in your lowest valley, you can still say, praise God. You can still lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. I've got so much to thank you for. You know, the devil don't want us to praise God. He don't want us to have the joy of God. You know, the, the joy of the Lord is your why. When you lose your strength, where's the joy going? I tell you, we need to start, I need to start praising God more. I see that in my life. Maybe I can sing this song. Everybody help us out can. I don't usually volunteer, but sometimes I do. So I'm going to try. But God honors, listen, if I come up here and I miss and don't even get it right. My God looks down in it with what? She tried. And I'm going to reward her for what? Her effort. Not how pretty you did it, but what these are, you did it for me. When we sing, play, do this unto the Lord. 
And you know what? It might not sound good to the congregation, but it sounds good to him. He says, make a joyful noise. Where are you? Yeah. Unto the Lord. When you're doing something, you're doing it to please the people. You might as well not even do it. And you're trying to get it as pretty as you can. Don't never try to let the Lord do it. So y'all look over the little failure, whatever. That'll be fine. This song says it's one of mine I like. What would I do without Jesus? Ask you a selfish question. What could you do without Jesus? I can't breathe without him. I can't walk. I can't talk. I simply just can't do nothing without my Jesus. So you know what? I've got to have him. He don't have to have me. He didn't have to have not one of us. He didn't have to save not one of us. But you know what he did? He did it. Because he did what? He loved us. And he died for us. Maybe I'll be quiet. Help us out. <laughs> Gee, it's about what I'm feeling. What would I do without Jesus? The shepherd of my family. Oh, I tell you, walk this road.
do this, it was God. So when I was a little girl, grew up, I was the shyest little thing that you, I reckon, know. When I went to school, I was so shy, I couldn't hardly learn not one thing. I'd have never dreamed that I stood up in front of a congregation and tried to sing. So you know what? When you look at me trying to sing, you say, that's God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm uh, glad to have Brother Austin Smith with us tonight. I'm going to turn the service over to him at this time. Let's, uh, let's give him a hand as he comes before us. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you love Jesus, shout amen. amen. Thank God for Jesus. I appreciate him. Without him, we're nothing. It's by him we live, we move, have our being. Amen. So appreciative to be back here again tonight. Uh, thoughts and prayers are still with Brother Andrew. I text him uh, the other. Matter of fact, I talked to him a little bit today, and he was uh, telling me about what Brother David said, get ready for his surgery. And I went to pray and day. I said, you know, the Lord can still work it out, but you won't even have to have surgery. Yeah. Amen. But we want to continue to keep him in, in our prayers and our thoughts. I'm so honored for him to have enough of confidence in me to be able to watch over his flock for the night. I thank you all for having confidence in me, but being up here. Every time, I remember as a little boy, we would go down there to Victory to, uh, for youth camp, and uh, we'd always pass by Mount Zion. And I'd always look at Mount Zion. And I said, Lord, I'd love to be in that church. I said, I just keep feeling pulled over that way or something. And I remember the first time I come here, I just felt so welcome and so loved. Felt like I walked back at home. Amen. So I'm so thankful that y'all allowed me to come and just be a part of what God's doing over here at Mount Zion. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we come from two different places tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Amen. That's going to be the first place tonight. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Then we're going to go over to Acts 27. Some of the messages you preach, most of the messages you preach, you have to live. And I've been living this message for probably the last month or so now. The Lord gave it to me last night. I just I just got home after I got off of work and just got in, get, just got done getting washed up, and the Lord just spoke this to my heart, and I feel like this is what He have us to talk about tonight. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter four and Acts twenty-seven. If you have it, say Amen. Amen. It's looking at Second Corinthians chapter four, verse. Looking at verse number seven. He said, "But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us." We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. I'm going to read that last one one more time. He said, persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Thank God we're not destroyed. Acts chapter 27, looking at verse 44. Hallelujah. The Bible said, And the rest, some on boards, and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they all escaped, all safe to land. Father, anoint me tonight to preach your word. God, help us tonight, God, to follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in God's house. I read these two verses of Scripture. Today, and, and uh, God spoke to my heart last night, broken but still floating. Broken but still floating. Us as people in life, it's just, it's just ordinary that we're going to go through hardships and pain. It's just, just the way that it is because of sin. You know, there's going to be hardships and sometimes just because of life itself. And nobody likes to feel broken. Nobody loves to cry. Nobody likes to feel hopeless. And nobody likes to feel like they don't have it all together. Amen. But it's in times where we are broken, times where we don't have the answer to the problem, is the times that we can look unto the author and the finisher of our faith. 
Times when we don't know how to fix the problem. See, human, man in general, they love to fix the problem. Uh, you can ask 90% of the men here, probably 100% of the men, if there's something that happens on the job site before they call somebody to fix it, they're going to try to fix it first. Whether it be something as small as a broken piece of wood or up to a tool that's just fell apart in their hand, man wants to fix all their problems by their self. But there's just some things in this life, church, we can't fix by ourselves. There's some things that we're going to go through that we, we're going to try to put together and seem the more we put our hands on it, the worse and worse it gets. Hey, remember, we got a God that I said Sunday night and told us, he said, call upon me in the day of your trouble and I will deliver thee. I'm thankful that we serve a God church that don't sleep and he don't slumber. Whenever I need him, it can be 12 o'clock noonday. It can be 12 o'clock midnight. Whenever I call on him, he'll always be there to answer my call. Hallelujah. What a God that we serve. We got a God that can use broken things for our good. A lot of times we look at brokenness as things that's useless or things that we can't uh, use for our own good. But God has a way of taking things that we don't even realize to use that thing for our good. And I want to tell us tonight, church, we're, we're some of us here tonight, we may be going through things. You ain't told nobody, ain't told the preacher, ain't told your Sunday school teacher. You don't have to tell them because God already knows. Amen. God knows whatever you're going through. He knows exactly what you've been praying in your prayer closet. He knows exactly exactly what you've been feeling. Amen. And I believe he's here tonight wanting to help somebody in this church tonight. I want to remind us that, Brother Ray, I want to remind us that God loves each and every one of us that's in this house tonight. He's got a love for us that's greater than any other form of love known on this side of life. Amen. I love a good mama. I I love my mama anyway. I talked to mama today. I talked about Sunday night how I call her and she calls me, seems like, all day long. Every five minutes, seems like mama calling on the phone wanting to make sure that I'm all right. That's a good mama in my eyes, somebody that wants to check on their baby. Amen. No doubt my mama loves me a lot, but I found somebody that loves me more than mama loves me. Hallelujah to God. The Bible said there's no greater form of love than this that a man would lay down his life for a friend. When I was out there in the world, didn't care, Brother Frankie, about church, didn't care about serving God, didn't care about reading, didn't care about praying. He still called you and I a friend. In the midst of our brokenness, in the midst of our sin, he still called us a friend. A man that come down from the portals of glory and got on an old rugged cross, had no doubt holes in his hand, holes in his feet, hanging for hours in agony. Amen. Couldn't breathe right. Had blood pouring everywhere. But even in his dying breath, he looked at the thief and said, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Who else do you know that in his dying breath is willing to save somebody else. He said, there's any point in time I could have called 12 legions of angels to come and rescue me from this place. Oh, but he said, I got to go all the way because there's somebody later on in life at Mount Zion, Pentecostal, holding this shirt. Amen. That's going to serve me. That's going to live for me. That's going to do my will. I'm thankful that he looked past my faults. I'm thankful he looked past my failures and he saw my needs. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a love that when I I went back in Genesis and I saw how God began to create everything in the first day. God spoke. He said, let there be light. There was light. It just began to shine. And a lot of people, they believe that when he said, let there be light, that the sun was created. Amen. But I went back and read the scripture. In the first day, God created light. In the second day, God created the firmament. In the third day, God created the earth, the sea. Amen. And in the fourth day, then he created the sun and the moon and the stars he hung in heaven. In the fifth day, he made birds and he made sea creatures. In the sixth day, when he made animals and when he made human, which means you and I. Amen. In the seventh day, he took rest from all that he done and he looked back and said it was good. And I kept looking over all that he made and, you know, it just said he created light and he made a, a greater light and a lesser light. And, and, but when he got down a man. It's as if he had a conversation with Jesus. said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Now God spoke the light and it began to shine. He spoke the 
earth and the earth was formed. He spoke the birds and the birds began to fly. But when he got the mankind church, he decided to get his holy hands dirty. Thank God. He come down there to this surf, brother David, and he got some dust from the ground and he began to form man out of the dust of the earth. He began to give him fingers and hands and arms and legs and toes and he laid there as an empty shell. Amen. And God could have said live and he would have got up and lived. He could have did that. Oh, but God got down on his knees and breathed his very own breath into Adam's nostrils and he became a living soul. Every time you take a breath, it's not just the oxygen in the atmosphere. It's not just breathing out carbon dioxide. Every breath you get is from the lungs of a holy righteous God that give it to us and pass down from generation to generation. He loves us, church. Thank God that he loves us. My uncle, he, uh, he's a collector. He, he's got an old-timey vehicle, you know, some of them antique cars. And I remember as a little boy going over there to, to, the, to their house, he had that all his other cars outside in the rain and in, in, in the sun and all that, but he kept that old vehicle underneath the shelter in the garage. He kept it waxed up and kept it cleaned up. I said, buddy, that's nice. And then he showed me all the trophies that he won with that car. He said, this car's won so many trophies for being clean, for being nice, kept it up and stuff of that nature. And I said, why do you got it in here? He said, because it's my most prized possession. I said could you imagine if we could look into God's trophy case? He would put you and I right in the middle of his trophy case and said man is my most prized possession. Yes they may be broken right now. Yes they may be in a sinful state. Oh but sooner or later amen the blood purifies and cleanses all unrighteousness. Without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. I'm thankful for all the sin that I've done in my life. It didn't take God a gallon of blood. It didn't take a bottle of blood. Oh, but it only took one drop of that ruby red blood and it took my black heart and made it white as snow. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that God loves me the way that he does. Because when I was out there in sin, I didn't care nothing for him. Amen. I didn't care about living living for God. I didn't care about living right. All I wanted to do was my own thing. When all of us was in sin, we wanted to do our own thing. We didn't want to have to live this way or dress this way or talk this way. Amen. But when I fell in love with Him, I fell in love with everything. Glory to God. I'm thankful that when I come in contact with Him, I didn't talk the same way I used to talk. I didn't dress the same way I used to dress because there was a change that took place in my life. And the closer... I began to get to him the more I began to take off. I said, God, I want to get as close to you as I can. And it come with sacrifice. He cleaned me up, sanctified me holy. And I said, Lord, I want to get even closer than this. He said, you can go on and get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I said, Lord, how do I get the baptism? I looked in the Word and the Bible said he gives it to them that obey him. Brother Frankie, I remember I was in True Path holding this church praying. Brother Tom Levina was sitting right next to me. And the Holy Ghost come into the room and I began to praise him. And I began to give him glory. Next thing I know, I was laid out on the floor. Amen. And all this big man you're looking at was rolling in the floor, speaking in an unknown tongue. Amen. I went to school the next day and people looked at me like I was crazy because I felt the Holy Ghost bubbling up on the inside. I couldn't hold him in. The teacher would go to teaching and the Holy Ghost go to speaking. And people said, what in the world's wrong with you? I said, I've come in contact with a man that can change your life. It's better than any drug you can take. It's better than any beer you can drink. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me and the same thing can happen to you too. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad to be saved? Set apart from this word. I'm thankful to be saved. He loves us and I'm thankful that he loves us. And on this walk, he never promised that it would always be easy. He never promised it would always be sunshine and rainbows. But he did promise to walk with us every step of the way. He said, Lo, I'm with you always, even till the end of the world. And I'm thankful that even once we get ready to cross over to the other side, we won't have to cross over Chile, Jordan alone. He'll be right there to welcome us in to the new city. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, I'm thankful that you love me. He said, no doubt you're going to go through a fiery furnace every now and again. 
You may go through a, a, a stormy sea every now and again, but I promise you, I'll walk with you, and I'll be there with you the whole time. I began to read in Acts chapter 27, a mighty man of God named Paul. We all know the story and how God changed this man's life on the road to Damascus. Amen. And how God called him to preach and this brother just went on for God. He wrote most of the New Testament. This man was on fire for God. And he, God had already dealt with him and told him that he's going to go to Rome and he's going to talk to Caesar. Amen. And they get here and are near Italy and they, they all get on this ship and, and he begins to pray and God begins to show him. He said if y'all go out there and sail, he said, I perceive that there's going to be a great hurt and, and much damage, not of the land and the ship, but also of our lives. This man told him, he said, listen, uh, somebody's come to me last night and told me if we sail, something bad's going to happen. But man, sometimes they just love to do what they, they want to do. They just love to do what they want to do. And God will give us a warning every now and again and let us know if you go down this road, it's going to be much hurt and there's going to be much damage. But as hard-headed as some of us is, sometimes we still choose that way. Yeah. We make stuff so hard on ourselves sometimes. Preach, you talking about me? No, I told you I've been living this message for the last month. There's been some roads I took and I said, Lord, I, why in the world? I mean, what, what in the world? He said, you could have avoided all this. I gave you a warning, but you didn't take heed to it. This is what the Bible said. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master. And the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. This man said, we ain't, ain't going to listen to you, Paul. You ain't nothing but a prisoner. But this man, he knows all about ships. He knows all about sailing. And he said, everything looks all right. I said, but I know the master of the wind. And he's already said, don't you go to sailing yet. Amen. But the centurion decided to keep on sailing. They get out there in this water. They get out there. And the Bible said, not long after there arose in a tempestuous wind called Eurachlodon. That word Eurachlodon in Hebrew means a strong winter wind. Amen. It was around winter time, so you know it had to be cold over there. Amen. This wind began to blow on the ship. Amen. And uh, these men just began to be tossed to and fro. Amen. And Paul come out of there and he told him, he said, I told you, why did you sail? I told you if you would leave from there, there was going to be much harm and damage to this ship. Amen. They was out there for around 14 days. I read in the Bible. Amen. But I love what, what Paul said. He had been away for a little bit in the ship. Amen. But an angel come unto him and he said, listen, I, I want to tell you something about of good cheer I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship for there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve saying fear not Paul thou must be brought before Caesar and lo God hath given thee all them that sail with thee wherefore sirs be of good cheer for I believe God Sometimes that's the hardest thing to do, is to believe God. Now, God spoke to Paul in the middle of this storm. Right in the middle. So the wind was still blowing. The ship was still being rocked to and fro. But he said, you ain't going to die, Paul. You got to go to Caesar. Hey, you know what Paul said in the midst of that storm? He looked around. It didn't look good. No doubt it didn't sound good, men crying and, and trying to figure out how in the world to save themselves. But Paul said, no doubt what it looks like, I still believe God. Hallelujah. It's hard sometimes when you look around at your situation and see how broken it is. And it's so hard to say, and the devil's sitting on your back saying, oh, God really loved you. You wouldn't be going through what you're going through right now. If God really cared for you, you think you'd be flat on your back? You think you'd be fighting in your body? You think you'd be fighting with your family? You think you'd be going through all this if God really cared for you? Amen. But Paul, I believe if the devil would have been on him, Paul would have looked at the devil in the face and said, I still believe God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I still believe, no matter what it looks like, no matter what nobody else says, I still got my trust and my faith in the one that holds tomorrow. 
Heard one man say, I'm not worried about tomorrow. Tomorrow's got a lot of things that I don't understand and things I don't know, but I know who holds tomorrow in the palm of his hand. I still believe God. And they began to sit there, and the Bible said that the, that the ship began to be broken. Amen. And the shipmen were getting ready to get out of the ship. They said, there's no way we can sail. But Paul said, wait a minute. Don't get out just yet. Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Heard one preacher put it this way. Brother Jimmy Jones, me and him was talking. We, matter of fact, we had went over to Israel last December. And we was able to get out there on the Sea of Galilee. We was on a boat and we had a little service out there on the boat. And we began to look, look across that water. And the, and the tour guide told us, he said, what you're looking at is the same thing that Jesus was looking at. He said, there's been nothing geographically changed since Christ had walked this earth. There wasn't no buildings being built around that area. There wasn't no hotels or nothing like that. It was the same way it was when Jesus was looking off the ship. We began to look over there, and it's like you could just feel the presence of God, knowing that somewhere 2,000 years ago, a man called Jesus sailed on the very same water. Amen. And we began to have that service, and Brother Jimmy Jones began to preach, and he told, he said something that stuck with me. He said, sometimes in storms of my life, God calmed the storm. You know, we read the Bible. He said, peace be still, and, and the wind stopped blowing, and the sea calmed down. He said, but other times in that storm, God calmed me. He let the wind keep blowing. He let the water keep going up and down. But he calmed me. Hallelujah. What do you mean, Brother Jimmy? I could stand in the midst of my, my trouble, whatever it is, and it seemed like it all was just falling apart, but I can still stand there and raise my hand and say, Lord, I still thank you. Lord, I still love you. Oh, hallelujah to God. A lot of times, you know, when we go through troubles and trials, we like to get in a pity party and feel sorry for ourselves. We'll get there, and it seems like it's hard to pray. It's hard to read. Amen. But sometimes you got to do what David did in 1 Samuel chapter 30. He encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. There's been many days people probably think I'm crazy. I went in the bathroom and looked in the mirror and said, Son, you can make it. Whether anybody pats you on the back or not, you can make it. Because greater is he that is within you than he that is in this world. I know it seems rough right now. I know it seems tough right now, but gird up yourself. Strap your boots on, soldier, and keep walking for God. People said, how in the world are you still making it? How in the world are you putting one foot in front of the other? I said, because he's holding me in the palm of his hand. I'm thankful, my God. I'm thankful to church and I'm still in the potter's hand. I'm thankful that he's still molding me and he's still shaping me even when I feel broken even when I feel like a mess he still got a plan for my life hallelujah to God except you abide in the ship you cannot be saved all pieces of that ship began to break and began to float in the water and all they got to the point where they was able to get out he looked and saw land and they let some of them just swim. Some of them jumped off the boat and just went to swim in the land. But I love what that verse 44 said. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces. Broken pieces. Sometimes you can stay afloat on broken pieces. Whew. Last night I found myself on broken pieces. I told you I'm, a, I'm just an honest, holiness preacher. I'll just tell you like it is. You know, if, it, if it talks about me, it's just it is what it is. But last night I went home and I, I worked all day yesterday. Got up at, I was at work at about 5.30 and we worked all day. And I got back home and didn't have no money in my wallet, nothing but a few dollars. Got there at the house, and, and I was just thinking. I just had a lot on my mind, had a lot going through my mind. I walked in the house, and I, I tried to lift up my conscience, you know, tried to disguise it. But, you know, mamas can see everything. Mama looked at me. She said, son, what's wrong? I said, I'm okay. Just let me go Let me go take a shower. And I, I got ready to go take a shower, and I like to listen to music when I take a shower. I mean, it's, it's just what I do. And I hit the shuffle on my playlist, and the song that come on 
was. He won't leave you there. Lord, I washed in that shower and just, I, I just began to just say, Lord, I'm thankful that I can't feel you. I went to searching around. I said, Lord, I can't feel you, but I'm thankful that you ain't left me here. I said, Lord, I can't feel you. I don't know where you are, but God, I know that you're still here. I got out the shower and put my clothes on and got around there to the living room with Mom and them. And boy, I just broke down, Brother brother Frankie. I, I began to cry. Tears were just coming out of my face. And I'm not one to cry. I'm not one to put it all out there, but I was so broken last night. And I told Daddy, said, what's wrong, son? I said, I feel like I'm in the biggest storm of my life. I feel like I can't get nothing right. I said, I feel like I'm just barely staying afloat. But that time God said broken, but still floating. I said, Lord, help me not to worry, not to let go and not to sink. But Lord, if I can just hold on to a broken piece and float my way through this battle, help me, God, to stay afloat. Oh, Lord. Oh, I cried, I cried, I cried like a youngin last night. I did. Mama said, I ain't seen you crying like that since the last time we got you a whipping years ago. I said, Mama, I said, I, I feel like I'm, I'm just getting around that stage now, you know, being an adult, you know. I, I said, I got all these bills coming up. I got my car payment. I got to get paid. I got insurance. I got this. I got that. It seems when one thing comes, another thing happens. I said, what am I supposed to do? And she said, just trust in the Lord. And I read what Paul said. I... Believe God. David already put, told us, Brother Cody, he said, I once was young, now I'm old. And I'm going to be honest with you, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Brother Frank, I'm not like you a while ago. I've seen God pay bills, and I didn't even have no money to pay them bills. But God always made a way. I said, Lord, how in the world, how can you make it on, on a little bit of my, I looked at my bank account one day. I'm not putting my business out there, not trying to, but I had a dollar and some change in my checkings account. Amen. And I went all that week on a dollar and some change. I said, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I said, but Lord, I trust you. Brother Frank, I went to Ruby be Tuesdays and that. I went to a Chinese buffet and that. I went I went to all kind of places. I had a full tank of gas in my car and people said, how in the world? I said, God can make you live off a dollar and some change in your checking account if you just trust in him. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I said, Lord, help me. Just stay on them broken pieces. What does broken even mean? Broken is having been fractured or damaged and no longer in working order. You know, those times when, when, you know, when you can just feel God all day, every day, you know, and some days you just wake up and it's like you just feel the joy of the Lord. You know, you just feel it all day long. Anybody ever had one of those days before? I mean, you just wake up and it's like, you know, you, boy, you got that old song in your heart and you just... You singing all day that song. You get to the stoplight and you're raising your hands and the people in the car next to you looking at you like you're crazy, but you don't care. You're praising God. You, I mean, you're just feeling him all day, but then there's some days where it feels like it's just everything's just messing up. I, I was reading a, a, a story the other day. There was a man that, that was having a conversation with God, and he said, Lord, if you love me, why'd you let everything happen to me today? And he said, what do you mean? He said, well, this morning I got up, I was late for work, and I got out there my car wouldn't crank and then when I got there to get ready to get lunch somebody messed up my food my food was wrong I got back home and when I got there I tried to put my feet in one of my massage things and, and it just shorted out and wouldn't work anymore he said why in the world did you let all this stuff happen to me today and then he said there was a conversation that come back and he said this morning a deaf angel was at your doorstep trying to get in the door and trying to kill you in your sleep he said but I just let you sleep through it I just sent one of my angels down there to put a hedge around you while you were sleeping. So I just let you sleep through that. He said the reason why your car didn't crank up was there was a drunk driver getting ready to pass your house and if you would have been on the road, you'd have been on a head-on collision and you'd have died. So I let your car die for a little while. Then when he passed by, I let your car crank up. He said the reason why the lady messed up your food at work was because she had, she was sick when she made your food and I knew you couldn't afford any more sick days so I let her mess it up and let some 
mighty well fix you a plate of food. He said, you know the reason why your thing shorted or your foot massage is shorted out? Because there was something wrong with that machine. And if you'd have plugged it in, it would have worked. Amen. You'd have had to sleep the night with no power because of the jacked up your breaker box. I said, what in the world? And then the man said, Lord, help me to trust you and help me to praise you when things is going wrong and when things is going right. Lord, help me to praise you when I got a pocket full of money and help me to praise you when I ain't got two nickels to rub together. Lord, help me praise you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So being broken, when you break something, it loses value. You know, if, you know a lot of times people there, they love to get the newest phone that comes out. You know, They love to break them old phones just so they can get a new phone. I mean, you, you've had that phone for years. Ain't never had a busted screen. But just as soon as the new phone comes out, oh, you've got a busted screen. How in the world? Then you go to your husband and say, baby, I, I, I messed up my phone. And it ain't no use for me no more. You can still call people with a busted screen. I had, I've done that before. But it, it loses its value to you. Then you can get you a car, you know, be, you know, I don't know, I'm not going to say, well, I'm 22, let's see, I'm not going to pick on nobody calling them old, but you got a brand new car back in 2007, that's around a medium sized area, 2007, got a brand new vehicle, you love that vehicle, you drove that vehicle for miles on the road, oh, but now it's about the 10 year mark now, and it's beginning to leak a little bit of oil or something, and you're sitting there and this, and you crank it up, and it's just and just pop it and everything. And you say, oh, this thing's starting to break down on me. Now it's time for me to get a new car. And all it was, you needed an oil change. You know, little thing. When something breaks, it loses its value. But I'm thankful that whenever I've been broken, I've been bro- I've never lost my value to God. We've never lost our value, even in our broken state. There is a difference between being broken and being destroyed. It said Corinthians began to say, well, cast down but not destroyed. He said that word destroyed means to put an end to the existence of something. When something's destroyed, you can't fix it. Ain't no way you can make it new again because it's been destroyed. The devil's tried his best to destroy us. That's what he's trying to do. He's come to kill, steal, and destroy Time and time again, he'll come to us with a trial and a tribulation, trying his best to destroy our walk with Christ. Not to break that connection, but he wants to destroy that walk with Christ. There's some people that I've seen and, you know, working on the ambulance crew now, there's some people that you, you go to a scene and, you know, they're sitting there fighting for their life. And they, they try to get words out, try to, to talk, but it seems as if they can't do it. They, can, they can't get no words out of their mouth. Scripture comes to my mind where the Bible says you must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. And some people that said, preacher, I'll get saved right before I leave this world. I'll just say, Lord, forgive me and I'll be saved. I said, but it can't work like that. Except the man be drawn of the Spirit, he can in no wise be saved. Oh, but when you feel that knocking of the Holy Ghost on your heart saying, go up there and give your heart to Christ, that's the acceptable time for you to say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Hallelujah to God. People, they love to preach and they say God's full of mercy and he is. God's full of grace and he is. But there will come a time where he said, I've given you enough chances. I've given you more than one opportunity to come and to know me as a savior. Because the devil's trying to destroy that, 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 that breaking thing between you and Christ. There's no coming back when you're destroyed. None whatsoever. But to God, he sees potential. In broken pieces. See, we look at broken pieces as trash. We look when we break something, you know, you break a lamp or you break a vase, you nine times out of ten, you throw it away. You know, you ain't gonna do nothing with it. Nine so hey, what, mama, you want me to keep this? No, it's broken. We can't use it. We'll just throw it in the trash. But I heard one man, he said, you know, one man's trash is a is another man's treasure. One man preached, he said, God's like a trash collector. He goes out there in the world, and the world called us trash. Said we was good for nothing. But I'm thankful that the trash collector came by and picked me up out of this world. 
He'll look at those broken pieces. And he'll see all the potential that can be in those pieces. I've, I may have preached this here before, but I felt like God was pushing me back to it. You know, when you go to Walmart and you go down the puzzle aisle, you know, you're looking at all the puzzles they got there. And you, and you see those pictures that's on the boxes. And a lot of people, they said, man, that looked good hanging on my wall. That looked good. You know, all those pieces. You know, I'll get this one. It's like a thousand-piece puzzle. You go home and you clear off the big table. You get all everything out the way and start pouring out those those pieces on that on that table. You get all those pieces together. It seems like some of them grow legs that are running on the floor. You know, you're sweeping around trying to get them all off the floor. Then once you get them where you want them, you start getting the edges right. Start getting the outside right. Then work your way in. And I said, Lord, I said, you know, God said, began to deal with me. I said, I treat you the same way like a puzzle. I said, Lord, how? He said, on the outside of that box, that's what man tries to do. Man tries to paint a pretty picture in sin. Man tries to act like sin's fun. The Bible said there is pleasure in sin, but it only lasts for a season. Amen. Man will try to make it look like it's fun to be out there Amen. partying all night long and getting home and not knowing how they got home. Man tries to make it seem as if they're not miserable, but every person that's in sin is miserable because they're trying to find something to fill that lonely void in their heart. They're trying to fill it with drugs. They're trying to fill it with love. They're trying to fill it with drink and all this other stuff. They're trying to fill that void. But there's nothing in this world that can fill the void in your heart. Amen. Better than Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You try to paint a pretty picture, but if you could look on the inside of that puzzle box, you'd see all those broken pieces. That's how I was when God found me. I tried to smile. I tried to shake everybody's hand and that like everything was all right. But on the inside, I was full of broken pieces. And when I gave my puzzle to God when I gave my life to God. I said, Lord, take it and do what you want to with it. This is all I got. All I have is broken pieces. I don't have a lot of money. I don't have the nicest things alive. But God, all I got is broken pieces. And he said, that's all that I need, son. He got all those pieces out there on the table. And I was ashamed of what he was looking at. I was ashamed of the things that I've done, the things that I've said. Oh, but he began to get all those pieces together. And no, he didn't start on the outside side like man does. He started right in the middle of that puzzle. He got my heart right. He began to, to, to change, change that heart and shape that heart. And what, what was on the inside began to show on the outside. And I'm thankful. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here tonight to tell you that God is not finished with my puzzle yet. Oh no. He's still working on my puzzle. He's still putting pieces together. Amen. He's still getting things right. And I said Lord, keep working on my puzzle. My puzzle won't never be complete until he comes to take me home. You know, if you get a thousand piece puzzle and you only give 999 pieces, that puzzle won't be complete because you'll be missing that one piece. You know, I heard people say 99 and a half won't do. When you give God your life, friend, you've got to give him all 1,000 pieces. You can't say, Lord, here's the majority and I'm going to keep this piece to myself. God wants all of you or none of you at all. He said, I'd rather you to be hot or cold. He said, but because you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. There's a lot of people that's, that's lukewarm in today's society we live in. You see them out there at the grocery store, you couldn't even tell they were saved. They're just out there. they blending in with all their surroundings. Amen. They're blending in. They, they look like the world, smell like the world. Amen. But then when they try to get in the house of God, they try to pretty up and look like Christ. Amen. But they're making Jesus sick to his stomach. They're making God sick to his stomach. He said, I'd rather you to be saved or to be a sinner. See, they, they never... They preached it like this when I was young. People nowadays, they don't preach it like this. They, they preach it, oh, God, he'll work on you little by little, and he will. But there will come a time where after you've been in it for so long, it's going to be up to you to make the changes in your life. A lot of times people, they'll be saved for 30 and 40, 50 years and still be in the same predicament they was. The first night they got saved, there was no growth, and you always got to grow in Christ. Can't never just stand still. There's always room to grow in Christ. One man's trash was another man's treasure. God picked us up in our broken state, and he's began to mold us and shape us into his likeness, into his image. But preacher, you may say, preacher, does 
God see me in my brokenness? Does God pay attention to me when I'm broken? Or is it only when I got things together he looks for me? No, he sees you in your brokenness. As a man named Jerry, as I'm trying to hurry, had a daughter dying at home. He come to Jesus and said, Lord, if you can just come by my home, heal my baby, heal my daughter. Lord, she's at the point of death. Jesus said, take me to her. As Jesus was coming to Jairus' house, the woman with the issue of blood come out the crowd and touched Jesus on his garment. And then he said, who touched me? Now, Jairus was there first. If we read it, Jairus was the first one to get to Christ. He's the first one that asked for God, for God, for Jesus to come to his house. But this woman just come out of nowhere and touched him. And she was made whole. No doubt the enemy got on Jairus' back and said, see there? He's not even worried about you. He's working on somebody else. How many times you prayed for something, church? And you've been praying, talking to God, wanting that thing to happen. And somebody else prays and their, their prayer gets answered before yours, boy. Sometimes you'll go to Sam, but Lord, what about me? This is for you. As Jairus was standing there, Jesus was dealing with the woman with the issue of blood. But somebody come to Jairus and said, trouble the master no longer, because she's already dead. They was not talking to Jesus. He was only talking to Jairus. But Jesus turned and looked at Jairus and said, take me to her. Jesus was nowhere in that conversation, but Jesus heard what they were saying. You may say, well, preacher, what does that mean? Just because you see him working in somebody else's life, he still got you on his mind. Hallelujah to God. He ain't forgot about you. He knows what you've been praying. He knows what you need, and he still got you in his mind. He's going to fix that problem in his time and in his way. They leave that place and come there and that, that daughter's laying there and all the mourners are in there and they're crying. They're saying, Lord, she's, she's already dead. And Jesus said, no, she's not dead. But she's only asleep. Those mourners began to laugh him to scorn just at the drop of a hat saying, what's wrong with this man? We noticed she, we saw her take her last breath. And Jesus said, Jerry, you got to get him out the house. Yeah. They got him all out of there and the only people that was in there was Jairus. His daughter in Christ. Oh, and Jesus just walked over there to her. Just no doubt probably reached out his hand and said, Damn, so I'm saying to you, arise. She just got on back up from a good sleep. Went to looking and Jesus said, Did somebody give us something to eat? Jerry is standing there and no doubt in his mind, he said, I almost lost hope. I almost didn't think he was going to do it, but just... When you get ready to let go, that's when God will come in on the scene. Every trial that you go through, church, it's not to, to harm you and it's not to make you let go of Christ. It's to build you. It's to make you stronger. Sister Rachel, if you want to come play on the piano. I look at people that, that lift weights, and I lift weights every now and again. I don't do it all. I need to do it a lot. But I look at men lifting weights. You know, some people you see in there, they're just so big and strong. They got big muscles, you know. I mean, they look like they've been in the gym all their life. And every one of them that I talked to, they said, I didn't just start squatting a 1,000 pounds. I didn't just start bitch pressing 400, 500 pounds. I had to start off small with maybe 50 pounds. And every time I'd work out, every time I'd, or I'd get there, I'd get stronger, and I'd get stronger. And now this is where I am. And our faith is the same exact way. God begins to deal with us on our faith. He said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain and tell it to be removed. And that mountain will have to flee. That mountain will have to get out your way. You begin to work on that faith, and God will begin to bring a, uh, uh, the devil will bring a trial, and he'll bring a little bit more faith. He'll bring another trial, and he'll bring a little bit more faith. He's making you stronger. That way, when you get to a place where a man will look at you and say, you should be losing your mind, you can look at him and say, yeah, I know I should be. I should be losing my mind. But it's because of him that I'm able to stand here and still praise him through it all. On broken pieces, broken but still floating. 
I said, Lord, I said, Daddy, I said, I, 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 that's amazing. I said, has, has something like this happened in, in recent memory? And about a hundred years ago, there was a big cruise liner by the name of Titanic. Anybody ever heard of it? Man said that boat was supposed to be unsinkable. One man said, he said, not even God himself can sink this vessel. And all God did was move a little iceberg. And that whole ship went to the bottom of the sea. I began to do a little bit of studying on the Titanic. And there was a man on there by the name of John Harper. He was a preacher. When he saw that the iceberg, that the, the ship had hit the iceberg. And he saw that the, that the ship was going down. He walked around on that, on that deck and he wasn't looking for a lifeboat. But he was crying out, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. He had a life vest on that said, even, they said he walked around that ship while it was sinking, going to man after man saying, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. One man said that he took off his life vest and gave it to somebody that didn't have one. And they said, don't you need it? He said, oh, I don't need it where I'm going. He said, I'm going up. This ship's going down. He said, but I'm going up. One writer said that when the ship went down, he was out there. One man was floating on, a, on something out there that fell off the ship. You know, there were six people that they said was recovered from the water. One of the survivors said they, they had a testimony and said there was a man out there crying out in the pitch black at night. I couldn't see him, but I could hear him. And he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved. He said, a man called out and he said, sir, have you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? And he said, I don't know. How can I do it? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved. They said, Mr. John Harper's last words was those very same words. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. You might be broken tonight. You may say, well, preacher, my home's broken. My children's lost. I got a lot of things I need God to help me with tonight. I believe tonight he can help us. Can we find a place around this hall tonight, church, and let's pray to God. Lord, help me to trust you in my brokenness. Oh, God, help me to hold on with all that I have. Help me to trust you. Help me, God, to hold on, Lord. When things ain't going right, when things ain't going the way I think they should be, God, help me to hold on. Help me to trust you. Help me, God, to trust you.